Oh, you're good. Thank Hi. you again for this. Um, if you were trying to explain Liverpool against Manchester United as a competition, as a rivalry, as whatever it might be to someone who had never been to a Premier League game before, how would you do that? Well, and I'm the wrong person probably to do that. Uh, because well, this is the 13th time I think that you've been involved in this meeting, so you'll know better than that. Yeah. The 16th time, actually. Let me say it like this: If uh, when the, the moment when, the, when, the, when they do this, the, the 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 fixture list, it's one of the first looks you have. The, when is that? Um, with which time around? These kind of things. Obviously, it's slightly different in England because you don't know in the. You get the list, and then you know in the first half of the season, but the second half you have no idea because it could be could be anywhere. It's different in other countries. You might know or not because it's always the same row of games. If you play in the third match day in the first part of the season, you play in the third match day of the second part of the season against the same op uh, opponent. Um, but you have a look, and you 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 have a look how. Um, who you play around, stuff like this. Is there, is there champ, possibly Champions League around these kind of things? You want to know that how many, how much time do you have to prepare? It's a big game. It's a massive game. And two biggest clubs in the world, I would say. Um, maybe in Spain, too, will say it's different they're differently, but two of the biggest clubs in the world, for sure, um, face each other. Um, massive history around big, big, big fights in the past. Big fights since I'm here. We lost strange games against United. Um, took a while until we could win there. All these kind of things. Always we had to learn to deal with it. Um, some players had to learn to deal with it because of um, how much it means to them. Um, so, but we are okay. That's now the 13th time, and we should have learned. Meanwhile, we had enough time to do that. And um, this time, it's an incredibly important game again for both teams. Um, and that says it all. Uh, so both teams are fighting for being in the Champions League next year or more. We will see. And um, that's the that's a tough one. And um, United is obviously in a situation. They won the last game. Hurt now a little bit. Was not overly happy with the performance, but the result and the results from other from other games open the door again um, for the Champions League. And that's that's the man United people face now. They will go for it, and um, we have to make sure that. If they want to go qualify for Champions League, they have to do it without our points. But um, between now and then, intense 90 minutes, 95 probably, um, will have to be played. I know your relationship with well, finally it goes back uh, quite a good few years to sort of before you became the manager at, at Mainz. I think you've had a conversation, I think you've mentioned those before. So this is the first time that you've gone face to face as managers outside of Germany. So I'm just wondering where your relationship is with him now and how you feel about him. On, on hold. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't have contact since he's in England, since he's at United. I think that's just a, due to respect. I respect his job, he respects my job. So So um, how you feel about this game as such against Rangnick? I, I cannot make a Klopp Rangnick or Rangnick Klopp game off it. I don't want to. Um, I respect him for everything what he did during his career. To be honest, it's um, it did incredible jobs wherever he was. Um, took a difficult one at Man United. Obviously, that's clear. Big expectations, these kind of things. Big expectations. Actually, no time to to get there because in our business it's like this. Um, but you can see uh, the changes he made, um, the, the 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 parts he he, he improved, um, and that's it pretty much. Uh, so I don't. I, when, I, when, I, when we now prepared the, the United game, um, I didn't think about Ralph in that moment um, because you watch the games and then you, you prepare for this team and it's not about Ralph or me. It's a very important football game, very, very important football game, but the managers probably will not score the decisive goal. So just finally then, if I may, um, Mo, we know he's on a great run of goal-scoring form, shall we say, at the moment, but he does have a rich vein of form and every face is Manchester United. Could that be important, maybe, if mentally, if nothing else, for him going into this one? It's a completely normal spell when Mo is going through. We spoke about all the physical demands he faced in the last few months, <coughs> and, um, so it's completely normal. I like the game at City, against City a lot, so I played a really good, a really, a really good football game, so um, it's only... A, 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 a question of time when he 
will score as well. So um, unlucky in these little moments. We all know as a, if, if you, are, you don't have luck as a striker, you, you don't even try better. Um, so it was close enough now for a couple of times, and um, yeah, the moment will definitely come. And I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with the form he showed last week or a few days ago. Yeah, you, you kind of touch on it the other day as well. But when you've got a top top player who's having a, a bit of a lean spell, like Mo, do you do anything differently with them? Is it, do you speak to them? Do you do you need to pick him up at all? No, not really. That depends on how how you are. We have, well, I see him more often in training than I see him in games, and we play all three days, so you can see that um, that's uh, you have a look at it, and you, then you, I have to make a decision if there's an if there's a need for a talk or not, um, and. We had plenty of talks um, in, in over, over the time we worked now together, but in this specific moment, there's no need for it. Um, where we, we talk, but not about the situation, what you make of it. So you now we talk about the normal stuff, what what he has to do in the game and uh, what the game plan is, and all these kind of things, and where we try to, um, to expose the opponent and all these kind of things. So um, no, but that's completely individual to all players. And as a group, you've been pretty good at refocusing after big moments. You have that euphoria of getting through the semi-final at the weekend. The fact that it's Manchester United to come, does that make it even easier just to get the, the mindset back on, back to Premier League? Whatever would have happened three days ago, to be concentrated and focused on the Man United game um, will ever, will always be possible. So, um, yes, it makes it easier, I don't know. Um, whatever would have happened, um, this is Man United game and it's... Um, it's for us um, a massive one, and um, focus will not be our problem tomorrow. Okay. Julia? Um, yeah, I just sort of to pick up on that really. The fact that how much time have you had on the training ground since Saturday? <laughs> the smile there with, with, against City, but also that you will have before this game against United. You talk about that focus of mind, but the fact you're on this intense run against bigger opposition right now, does it make it that little bit easier? What? That we don't cannot train. No, that you. That, it's, uh, not the mind, I suppose the mindset is more. You do the training, but how much training do you need to do because of the opposition that, that you're facing? Oh, the, our situation is um, pretty much now already since early January always the same. It was one international break, and I think, but apart from that, it was always the same. You you have uh, so we play on Saturday, Sunday morning session with um, the boys who didn't play, kind of normal session. <laughs> Boys, other boys recover. Today's Monday. Tomorrow we play. So means we have exactly this session today. This session will not last forever. This session will not have 11 v 11 elements where you go in challenges. It's just explaining the difference between the two games, the last one and this one, because you have it in your mind. What can we use from that? What do we have to ignore from that? All these kind of things. Um, it's really more the, 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 the longest part. Of, again, today we'll be sitting here in this room and having the video meeting just to show what are they doing and what are they allowed to do against us, <coughs> these kind of things. So that's make it easy or whatever. I would prefer always to have time to properly recover and then time to prepare properly. But that's uh, wishful thinking. Uh, it will never happen again. So um, as long as you are successful, you don't have the time. Um, and that's why uh, it's... Uh, it's pretty demanding for, for the players that you always like. We're not celebrating now. The, uh, so the, um, if you want the semi final or qualified for the final, uh, but of course it's a, on the way home. It's um, you are literally flying, not only sitting in a plane, um, and that's great. But uh, the boys wouldn't be here, and we wouldn't be in the situation we are in if they would uh, not be ready always to cut off. Last game, prepare next game as good as you somehow can, and then let's play it as good as you can. And um, so, but it's actually so for three, four teams in the league, it's exactly the same. For some others, they have obviously lesser games and they can prepare longer. This week, now it was pretty similar for for United. Same, I think it was Saturday as well against Norwich, and now they didn't have more time and they cannot use more time. You cannot do anything in training in that time. It's clear. Chris. Um, Jürgen, you, the 5 0 win at Old Trafford was one of the last games for United under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Just wondering, what, what changes in United have you noticed under Ralph Ranić to the latter time of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's reign? 
actually nothing I want to talk about really. Um, obviously, it's, yeah, I think so. Ralph organ tried to organize the team. That's how it is. Bring it in a, in a, in a clear structure with the, with the squad you have. That's what that's what he did. And um, United um, played some really really good games. But because it's United, even when you win the games, it's like, oh, ah, but here's a little bit, not that, still not there, and stuff like this. So it's difficult to, to gain some momentum, I can imagine. And um, so that's, that's it. But uh, we can see lesser goals, um, for sure. And they dropped some points. If you, if you put them on, their, on the points tally, then you, you see all of a sudden they are fourth in the, in the table. And if you are fourth in, um, in, in the Premier League, means you are a quality side because with all the opponents you have it's madness how, how consistent you have to be to get somehow close to that area we all see Tottenham flying in the moment and get a little drop here but the, the, the quality they have is, is incredible Chelsea is so strong and we are, we are all still fighting for, for getting qualified for the Champions League next year and if you did that from that moment on you can think about something else but United is in that in the group as well and that says a lot about the quality they have and um, yeah I just want as well, the midfield three uh, rightly got a lot of praise from their performances on, on Saturday. Um, but given the options that you have in midfield, how difficult is it to select your three or your three in midfield when the options that you'll be leaving out as well? Yeah, in our situation, it's clear. There were some players on the squad um, for, for the weekend, for example, and will not be in the squad for tomorrow. Um, um, we're in a really good shape. Really, really, really good. So nobody that I, I wouldn't tell here, obviously, would say oh, it's easy for us to leave him out. But the boys behave. But if we achieve anything this year, whatever it will be, um, it's because of how all the boys deal with the situation. And that means as well the boys who are not in the squad from time to time, because they keep still the, 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 the training quality yeah. extremely high level. Um, uh, really, all credit to them. It's absolutely outstanding. So now making decisions, it, uh, yeah, it's, it's, but I have to do something. I don't run, obviously, on the pitch, and I don't um, uh, score goals, I don't defend, all these kind of things. So I have to do something, and decision making is one of the things I have to do. And that's all about you try to figure out how it is, you try to, what is the best possible formation. And, and you have to um, think about intensity in the past, who played how often, all these kind of things. We didn't have that situation too often. Usually in that part of the season, we, we are already on three wheels and try to get somehow through. So um, hopefully we have this, have to make this decision until the end of the season. Thank you. Okay, last question is Carl, please. Um, <clears throat> Sadio, great game on Saturday. I think you scored four goals, four games now. I'm just wondering how maybe the added competition he got from Luis Diaz's arrival in January which would be seen as you know, his, his position, how much maybe that's influenced or had an effect on, on his performances or his, the way he's played. And, and that roll through the middle, is that something he can you know, do longer term for you? I know Sadio since nearly six years. As far as I know him, he never needed any kind of competition to try to, to be the best version of himself. Um, played for a long time, pretty much all games for us, and then he was fit uh, and performed on incredibly high level consistently. That was um, that's it. Uh, bringing Lewis, I, I'm not sure that affected that part of his game. I, I, I don't know. It was uh, not that was not the reason for bringing Lewis. Um, and playing the center obviously suits Sadio as well. Very well as well, so he can be. He played for us, scored incredible goals and so important goals for us from the left wing. But he can play the center as well, and we saw that again. But Sadio as well had some physical struggles when he came since he came back. It's not that he was he, he could not use that's the complete boy doesn't feel it, Sadio didn't feel it, but we could see that he cannot use his immense physicality just like this week in, week out, or three, all three days. That was the problem. And I really felt before the game already against City, okay, um, that looks like Sadio physically. And that's, that's it. And that's why he could play the game he played. Um, very important. Um, he was um, super difficult to defend and very 
helpful and incredibly important um, in our defending because the goal he scored the second, the first one for his first goal, um, you only can score if you try to get there. And um, he did that. And you only, can, you only do this run if you feel fresh enough to do it, these kind of things. So it all works together pretty much. Um, no, I don't think that Luis now reason that Sadio scored four goals. But somehow, maybe as well, because um, Luis obviously uh, can keep a last line pretty busy and it opens up um, always gaps for other players. Thank you so much for checking the video. If you want more from us, then do consider joining Red Men Plus, which funds everything we do here for free on YouTube. But not just that, we're going to give you a whole bunch of incredible Liverpool content in podcast and in video form, extra Red Men TV shows and documentaries, features and interviews with Liverpool legends past and present. Get closer to the city, to the football club that we all love on redmenplus.com. Click the button, head over there now.